In this video, we want to introduce the concept of um, orthogonal transformations and orthogonal matrices. Uh, the video playlist is at the website digital-university.org. Let's say that we have just a simple setup here. We have a vector r and let's say that for every xy point on R, we're going to keep x the same value, but add 2y to it, x plus 2y. And that will be an x prime, or an x point, for our different line. And the y point for our different line will be 2x plus y. So that'll be our rule. So for every xy point on here, we can find a corresponding x prime, y prime on a different line. Now the different line that we have will have, um, will be of longer length than r, because we can see that for each x vector, each x here, its corresponding x prime is going to be bigger than that, and for each y point here, the corresponding y prime is going to be larger. So this might be what we call small r, and then x prime, y prime points will comprise a longer vector, big R. And these two equations, of course, we can write in a matrix form like this. So nothing fancy here, obviously. Now, we can, however, we can interpret this in a different way. We look at this matrix, this matrix equation, and we'd say, well, let's see, x prime equals x plus 2y, y prime equals 2x plus y. This would be the equation of one line, and this would be the equation of a second line. So it might be some, a situation equivalently by this matrix by these two equations could be interpreted like this. Here's x, y. Here's the line, say, x prime and the line y prime. So instead of thinking of x prime, y prime as the points that comprise a second line, now we're thinking of, well, I could just, this is the equation of a line. This is the equation of another line. So this could be an axis system. So now what we have, instead of having two different vectors in one coordinate system, the other way we can interpret this by thinking of these as equations of two different lines, two different axes, x prime and y prime, we have our original vector, small r, but now we have two coordinate systems, or two axis systems, x, y, and x prime, y prime. So here we're at a point x, y, or what would be the point in the x prime, y prime system? We would go along parallel to the y prime axis until we hit the x prime axis. So that would also have a point x prime, y prime. So for each point here on the vector r, it has an x, y point and a corresponding x prime y prime point in our new system, our new axis system, x prime and y prime. So our equation can be interpreted two different ways. It could be telling how one vector transforms into another vector in a single coordinate system, or we keep this the same, and it tells us how that single vector r is expressed in two different coordinate systems, x, y, 
x prime, y prime. Now, notice that I did not draw x prime and y prime as being perpendicular. And in fact, for what we have here, it cannot be perpendicular. What happened back here is that when we transform r into r with these equations, this equation is giving us the x primes and y primes that comprise big R, the length was not preserved. This matrix transforms small r into big R, but the length of small r is not preserved. And we'll see in a moment that is why these our new axis system, x prime and y prime, cannot be perpendicular. But instead now, if we have a situation where same setup, we have a vector r, we have another vector comprised of the points x prime, y prime, and there's some matrix that relates the two, but with this problem, with this situation, this matrix transforms x, y into x prime, y prime in such a way that big R, the length of it, equals the length of small r. Now, for this situation, if instead of thinking of our matrix that relates x prime and to x and y, transforming small r into big R, having only a single axis system, instead of we think of it as just a single vector r with two axes, x, y, and x prime, y prime, then the x prime, y prime axis must be perpendicular. We have that here. Here's x, here's y, here's x prime and y prime. Now what's the relation? If instead of, if we go back to our original interpretation, transforming vector small r into vector big R, but doing it in such a way that the magnitude of small r is preserved, if then instead we go to the other interpretation of having a primed axis system, why must we say that this these must be perpendicular? We can see why, because here, if we're saying the magnitude of r is preserved, well, the magnitude of small r, or the magnitude squared, is x squared plus y squared. Likewise, the magnitude squared of big R is x prime squared plus y prime squared. So if the magnitude is preserved, then x squared plus y squared has to equal x prime squared plus y prime squared. Now here, if we go to our tilted axis interpretation, where the axes are perpendicular, the small vector, or the vector small r, that goes from here to here. And its magnitude squared is x squared plus y squared. Now on the primed axis system, where these are perpendicular, here and here, now what is the magnitude of this vector here in that system? Of course, so we go here, go perpendicular up to here, and then we have r along the diagonal, so its magnitude squared is going to be x prime squared plus y prime squared. So here we have in the unprimed system, the magnitude of squared of r is x squared plus y squared.
in the prime system, it is x prime squared plus y prime squared, and they're the same, which is what we want. That was our stipulation. And we see that when the axes are perpendicular, then that it gives us it, that stipulation is um, preserved when these axes are perpendicular. If they're not perpendicular, then of course we would not have this happening. So the point is that matrices which transform one vector into another, but they preserve the magnitude of the vector. Those are called orthogonal matrices because instead of thinking them as transforming one vector into another vector of equal magnitude, if instead we think of them as generating an x prime, y prime new axis system, then in that particular situation, x prime and y prime must be orthogonal to each other. So that's sort of an introduction to orthogonal matrices. We'll discuss them in a lot more detail and a lot more of their properties in the future videos.